Guys, we got the dates for 2023 locked. Maybe a couple more added. Salt Lake City, I'll be headed your way October 27th and 28th. Batavia, Illinois, November 10th and 11th. And closing out the year at Cobbs in San Francisco, California, December 8th and 9th. Get all tickets at ryansickler.com. I'm excited to announce that my special Lefty Son is now available as an audio album. Go check it out everywhere you get music. I'm very excited to announce that the Honeydew video is now available on Spotify. It doesn't change anything for you at all. It's just an additional place to watch the Honeydew. Go check out the Honeydew Audio and video now available on Spotify. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I'm going to start this episode like I start every episode by saying thank you. Thank you for supporting this show. Thank you for watching, subscribing. Thank you for supporting my special. If you haven't seen it, go over to my YouTube. Check that out now. Um, Come out, see me on tour. Listen, wait, I want to say this. If you got to have more of this show, then I'm telling you, you got to check out the Patreon. It's five bucks a month. That's it. There's no tears, no none of that. It's five bucks. And it's the honeydew with y'all. And y'all have the wildest fucking stories. All right. I can't tell you how many people we just talked to another person that died. Another person that died and came back. I've talked to somebody that died in, in every city on this tour so far. Every city somebody has died and come back. All right. Go check out the honeydew with y'all. Go subscribe to the Crab Feast. It's a great storytelling podcast. And come see me on tour if you're around when I'm in your town. All right. What do we got? November 10th and 11th, Batavia, Illinois. December 8th and 9th, San Francisco, California. That's closing out the year. And that's what we're doing over here. Now, you guys know what it is. We're highlighting the lowlights. And I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Very excited to have this guest on today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Country Wayne. Welcome to the Honeydew. Thank Country you, bro. Hey, how you doing, my man? Dude, I'm very excited to have you here. Thanks, thanks. I am. I was saying outside to you before, I, I want to give her credit. Jess Hilarious. Is mm-hmm. a, I'm Baltimore. She's a Baltimore girl. I follow her. and so. Really liked her. And I discovered you through her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this dude's funny as shit. And you're clean. Mm-hmm. It's thanks. another thing. And yeah, and until today... When you came here, I didn't know you did stand up because you didn't tell anybody you did stand up or show anybody you did stand up. And then you punch them in the mouth with the number one Netflix special. Yeah, man. I, I, my fans knew, but I always, the ones who knew, knew. The ones who didn't, didn't. But you Now know, they do. Yeah, they, they, they know now. Now they do. They know now. So please promote, plug everything and anything you like, tours, your special, whatever you got. Uh, hey, man, just Country Wayne. You know, so just Google Country Wayne and everything up there. K-O-U-N-T-R-Y Wayne. Well, I was saying to you, too, like I became a fan through that. And then I saw you pop up on Bert's podcast. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, he's doing podcast. I want to get him on. Yeah. So thank you for doing this because, um, you know, we look you up and we research a little bit. I want to get into this, but I want to do some background first. But you had your first kid at 17. You have 10 children. Yep, 10. ten how old are you? I'm 35. All right. Yeah. All right. I didn't have my first and only until I was 40. Okay. Wow, great. Yeah, Congratulations. I still got hey, man. six years on you. <laughs> my first. Yeah. Well, how you did that? How you pull out, man? <laughs> like, how you pull out all those years? It wasn't hard. It, it wasn't, wasn't hard. Oh, it really? It, no, was, it wasn't it hard? hard. Oh, oh. I've been sick of mine. It yeah. wasn't difficult. Oh. It wasn't. That was all I could think about is I don't I, want 10 kids. Like, I would say that to myself. I don't, we don't need 10 kids. Yeah. All right. I don't, I deal with them. Them girlfriend in the country got that good, though. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about where you're from and your upbringing, and then we'll get to 17. Because also, you don't have much. That's you're already a dad at 17. You're not getting a lot of that 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 college year stuff and that that 20 something fucking off and playing around either. Because you have, I don't know how many kids. We'll get to it. I don't know how many kids you have by the time you were 22 or 23. We'll see. Nah, by the. Um, but where are you from originally? I'm from a small town called Millen, Georgia. Millen? Yep, Millen, okay. Georgia, about 3,000 people. All right. 
And then uh, how were your parents together when you? Nah, nah. My parents was definitely uh, weren't together. Come from poverty, all that. So they weren't married, but were they dating or were they uh, just like? I mean, you ain't, man, you ain't poverty. None of you ain't doing nothing. You just it's, scratching it's, We all in survival mode. Uh, so when you. you married, you're not even married yeah. for real. You just trying to get it. And uh, I got it. So you know, I couldn't. I couldn't really. I wasn't ever gonna be able to play around in college and stuff anyway because my parents had played around enough. So I was picking up debt from there, playing around. Yeah. So what's life like growing up? Do you have brothers and sisters? Are you an only child? Uh, on my mom's side, I had two sisters. So it's two sisters and me. I was the youngest. On my dad's side, I got seven siblings, but I'm the oldest. Okay. Yeah. So Now, um, did, how many at a time were, were you living together? Like your sisters and yeah, you me and, and my your mom? Sisters. Me and my sisters and my mom. Okay. And you were the youngest? Yep, the youngest. So you're, bringing, you're being brought up on that side by all ladies? All ladies. Okay. The women. Okay. So do you feel like that helped you understand women? Oh, or do you feel like it did not help you understand it helped women? Me, it definitely made okay. me understand it. That's why the name of my special is A Woman's Prayer. Because I understood the powerful the power in a woman's prayer, man. Uh, what a woman think of you and a woman connection to the earth and all that. Yeah. Yeah, that is powerful. It's powerful. Women powerful, man. Okay, so you're raised by your sisters and your mom, and how often is your dad around? Mm, he around every once in a while, small town. So I, he didn't like leave, leave, but you see, he'd be around. Yeah, I, he, he'll be around. He didn't move sure. out of state. Uh, nah, not not then. He did it later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many kids did he end up having? He ended up having eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. How many kids your mom end up having? Three. And you had ten. Ten. There's yep. twenty one kids involved in these three people. I had seven. Kids by the time I was 22. No, you did not. Yes, I did too. You had, <laughs> yeah. you had seven kids I by the time si you were 22. I had seven kids, man. If you started at age three, that would average out every three years. Yeah. You'd have to, that's insane. You I had was, seven kids. How many different women? Five. Five? Yep. Really six, but me and one of them, I got custody of my daughter, so. It's, listen. Yeah. I don't know why I'm saying this to you, but when you really, well, also you were young too. So your sperm is pow. Yeah. But the older you get, it's not as, as easy. I hope not. It's not. And <laughs> mm. it ain't no worry. Okay. It slows down a little bit. You, you know that for sure? Yeah, for, okay. for sure. It's not as easy. It took me three tries. Thank you. And we were trying. We were actually attempting and, you know, we weren't just fucking and having fun and mm -hmm. any of that. Uh, I'm not saying that you were. Yeah. I'm not also uh, not saying you were trying to have seven kids by the time uh, you were nah, 22 nah, nah. years I, old I, either. I, I definitely wasn't trying. But you're how old now? 35? 35. So would you say it's fair to say that from 22 to 35, three kids, you slowed down? Oh, 22 to <laughs> 22, 22 to 35. I've been, I've been, I had more women probably between the age of 14 and 22 than I had between 22 and 35. How many women would you say you dated? De not even uh, slept with, just dated. dated. Yeah. Which mean like I only went on I was about three, only three went three or four women that I really dated. I was gonna say you're in a small town, so it can't yeah. it's not like you're in New York and there's mm -mm. tons of opportunities. No, I ain't really, really I, I was with my my high school sweetheart. She me and her got three kids. So, okay. And my ex wife, we got three. So that's six. Okay. So that, so the rest of them was just But were they all local girls? Yes. Or are these girls except, except on the, the road? No. Nah. Girls on the road? No. Nah. Do these what, ladies all know each other too? Yeah. We listen. <laughs> Did they before? Yeah. <laughs> we all from that small town. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had the women before the fame. So a lot of the mistakes when women guys get out here get excited about women on the road and all that. I had already did that. I was the famous, I was famous in high school. I was famous in kindergarten. Why? So, kindergarten. He yeah. said I was I, famous I, I, in kindergarten. I would be honest. Like my, listen, my baby mama was homecoming queen. My mama was Miss Jen Miss Jenkins County. My sister was homecoming queen. Miss Jenkins County, though, yeah. you said, yeah. My, my son just won homecoming uh, king. It, my family always been elite, popular in that small town. Okay. So that small town, my mom was popular, my dad was popular. So, so you got a bunch of big fish in the small town. Yeah, a bunch of big fish in the small town. So man. since everybody was popular, they knew you coming up anyway because oh. everybody knew mom, dad. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, rolled, I rolled off their fame, but got and it. I stood in it. Like, okay. It's like being LeBron's son, but really came in ball. I, I, I balled my parents. Balling. Literally balling. Literally all them kids. Yeah. All right, so growing up, are you an athlete? Do you play sports? Yeah, I play like, sports. What do you do growing up? I play um, basketball, baseball, and football. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Um, favorite basketball. Yeah, I'm better at baseball though. I was gonna ask, what was you? Why? Why is it just too boring? Baseball, basketball is a lot quicker. 
It was hot outside, man. What's that? It was hot outside. Hot outside. <laughs> yeah, was, you chose the AC black, over yeah, it all. Black right. people, boy, it gets, it gets too hot. That's yeah. funny, dude. All right, so 17 is mm -hmm. your high school sweetheart then, right? Mm -hmm. And this is your first child. What happens? How do you find out? She tell you? Do you freak out? Do you? How do you react? Uh, well, her period ain't come on. And I was like, oh, well, good Lord. Then you know you pray, oh, it's late. Every little spot you hope is a period coming on. It didn't. So then we went to the doctor to find out she was pregnant. I was and how old was she? Uh, she was 18. Okay. I was in 11th grade, so I signed up for the military immediately. Hold on. There was no um, talk or anything of, of aborting the baby. It was always, we're going to have this baby. Yeah, yeah, we talked. Her gave, too, though, I mean. It, yeah, but I gave her, I gave her money. But uh, she didn't do it. But uh, She get the money back? Nah. <laughs> Took your money and nah, gave you a gave, baby, yeah, bro. Yeah. I got a joke about that on the stage. I Took said, your abortion money and gave you a baby. I said, I told my son, I had a hit out on him when he was young. <laughs> and he, oh, he don't shit. like that joke, but I like it ain't a joke. But, All right, so now she says I'm going to do it. And how do you feel about this? Are you freaking out or are you just like, all right, not really, it. man, not really. I'm that type of person. Once I do something, I don't try to, I'm, I'm like, hey, man, end of the day, this is what it is. I'm, I'm about to force nobody to do nothing. I just was doing it. I was just leaving it as an option in case she wanted to do that. I don't want to make her have it either, you know, but it's just growing up in those environments. But we had, and I went, I signed up for the military because my daddy said, he said, man, you, you ain't even taking care of yourself yet. So I'm like, okay. And then he said, I thought you was a smart one in front of somebody, like trying to, I said, okay. So I signed up for the military. So they let you go to basic training on the way to 11th grade. I mean, on the way to 12th grade. And I'm supposed to go back to AIT after 12th grade. Okay. But I ain't go back. Yeah. So I ain't go AWOL. I just, what, uh, I just went BWOL. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I ain't go back. Bye, you went bye, y'all. <laughs> bye, y'all. Bye. What branch was it? Um, National Guard. All right, well, 13, thank, Bravo. thank you for your abbreviated service, country. Oh, way. hell, oh, yeah. hell, artillery. I was, just, I, I made it through basic training, though. I know a couple guys that did National Guard because it, what was it, like uh, one weekend a month and then two weeks a year or something like that you had to give? Yeah, yeah. But we got to go on. I supposed to go back. I just went to basic training. So I did graduate basic mm -hmm. training. But then when you didn't go back, they didn't come find you? They tried to, but I told them I, told them I had scoliosis. <laughs> The first thing I'm thinking is yeah. I would have been like, look, I'm a teenage father. You went with scoliosis. Nah, I <laughs> and I'm flat footed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want me on the front line. That's yeah. what I told him. Yeah. I said, I'm flat footed. So if you want somebody out there walking like this, back cricket, oh, feet flat, flat, looking like a duck, they're not going to be scared of us. <laughs> All right. So now you're out of the military. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? Man, I went to the streets, started hustling, man. I need, I need some money. Okay, I is your some... baby born at this point yet? Yeah, I had him. He was born. Okay, so your first, first child's child son. Okay. Yep. First month of 12th grade? Yep. Are you back in school? Yeah, I'm back in school. I'm What's back it home. feel like to be a dad in class? Do you feel like, like. Man, I feel like. You feel older than the yeah, teacher? Yeah, I feel like, and I feel, I feel like me and the teacher can hear these kids. I get, yeah. I'm here with these kids because my life was real. I had to buy milk. Pampers, this this little baby looking at me that I love so much now, seeing it, looking in my eyes, and I'm like, hey, man, this is my son. And I got to stand in it, point blank, period. So then you go to the streets and start doing what? What are you selling? I'm selling cocaine. Coke? Mm-hmm. And are you, do you ever get robbed? Do you ever have any problems out there doing that? Mm, people didn't pay me sometimes, but I ain't really had too many problems. Nah. And what's considered a good day for you on the street? Well, at that time, I was small town hustling, but later on, I got bigger. So you started in your small town? Small town. So then how'd you get bigger? Just my reputation is getting more money. Um, you get you get a connection so I could buy more dope for a cheaper price. And you're using that dope money to feed your baby? and Yeah. All right. Feed my baby in my dream. Just later on down the road. Okay. Baby and dream. By the time I was 22, I was really pushing towards the dream. Yeah. All right, but I did have before. I did have a job. Uh, cause when I first started hustling right after school, I got caught fast. I got a felony. I got ten years probation. How'd they catch you? They really didn't catch me. I ran. I got away, but I threw the drugs early, and then they sent the dog to go look. The dog couldn't find it either. But the dog had to take a pee, 
and lift his right leg up and pee right there. No. On it. Yeah, and he peed and sat down. <laughs> and was like, it's, it's, it's right here. It's right here. It's right here. <laughs> guess like, what? I said, God <laughs> dog it. <laughs> I've been doggone. I know where that saying come from now. <laughs> I'll be doggone. It's right there. All right, so you get pinched and you get out quick on that, though. Uh, I got ten. I, they let me out, but I had to go to court. I ended up getting ten years felony probation. Damn. Mm-hmm. So now you got a felony. You can't vote. Can't carry a gun. Can't do any of that shit. Yeah, and I ain't out. I ain't do none of that anyway. So okay, seventeen. Kid number one. How old are you when child number two happens? Child number two, uh, eighteen. So no, nineteen. I had just turned nineteen. Same girlfriend. Same girl. So you have your first three with her. Yeah, first, no, I had another one. So step- Two of them born at the same time. <laughs> like within two weeks apart, same hospital. When a, you had two kids when, born two weeks apart in the same hospital. When, when a nurse see me come in <laughs> the second just week. Run, they should just give you a wing down there. Hey, when a nurse see me come in the second week, she was like, Mr. Coley, did you leave anything? I was like, yeah. yeah. No, I dropped something else off. <laughs> So I'm looking in the glass again. Same uh, situation. <laughs> same doctors. Oh, no, that is terrible. Yep. Everybody's the same but the mom, huh? Mm-hmm. And they um, and the baby. And the baby. That's hilarious. Yeah, and they um they best friends. Like them, those two, they real close. Literally. Did they know each other before? So wait. One and two are with high school sweetheart. Mm-hmm. How old are you when number three happened? Oh shit! You're you're you're, you're the same week. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah same week. So, yeah, the, so, the, so the other one came. Okay, so now you got three. By, but the one I had the third one, my baby mom. But I had dealt with another girl, so mm-hmm. she eased in and yep. stopped that number three spot. Yeah, and number four. It's number four back with uh, childhood one, sweetheart. One, two. Okay, one two. Then I had a I had another one. <laughs> I had another one. Uh, the third oh, three was actually somebody else. Somebody else. <laughs> Went to this girl house one night, man. And that was it. One time. And I didn't even. Re- Can I, I ask really you finish. that? Be honest with mm-hmm. me. You didn't even finish. I thought I did. But yeah. it was like, you know how you finish, but it'd be like. Zzz. But I, I finished. I, but then uh, the baby mine. Yeah. Have you ever, truthfully, mm-hmm. be honest with me. Yes, I have. Just had sex with a woman one time. And got her pregnant, and the only time, the only time, let's say that. My three. Yeah. The, my three middle baby mamas, each one of them got pregnant, me dealing with them that one time. Just a one night stand. That one, that first night. All three of them? All three of them. All three of them. I <laughs> promise you, God was like, you know better. <laughs> so, that is I, wild, I'm dude. A pun- I'm a, I got something for you. All three. All three. Okay, so you're uh, how old are you? Twenty two, and you already have seven. S- seven. Mm-hmm. How are you even doing that? Where do you spend most of your time? In the bedroom, mostly. <laughs> In the pussies, where I, you spend obviously. most of your time? <laughs> In pussy. <laughs> yeah. I'm from the country. We ain't have no cable. <laughs> We ain't have nothing to do in the country. You created a country. What yeah. the fuck are you talking I did. about? I did. I created it. I created it. I created it. All right. Hold on. I guess what I mean is, are you staying, like, what's base camp for you, so to speak? Are you uh, my, staying with bed, your high bed, school bed, sweetheart? My are you bed, at mama's your house? Because you're, you're a kid. You're not, bed, are you still at home? No, nah, my baby mama's house. Okay. Mom and dad don't say nah, you can stay grown, here. I was grown, man. I was already, man, I was already throwing parties, making money. I was, I was getting money. All right, so you're staying at her place. It was my, it was my outlet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never did drugs. It would sound like an inlet, I, I, bro. I, I never, <laughs> I never, a lot of leaving I, it in. I never drank. I never smoked. I never partied for real. So women was always that's the, your vice. That that was my vice. Mm-hmm. You know, but these women I cared about. You know, you and know. so now at at. 22 with seven kids mm-hmm. are you selling more what do you do do you get a different job like was or is this one uh, comedy you I, really start to lean nah, into comedy com- no nah. comedy didn't take out till i like 26 27 but no that 27 i was um i was hustling and i was doing good in the streets but now i'm trying to make it i'm really trying to get out i'm trying to get me and my family out so i'm trying to do the rap i'm trying to be a rapper um all this throwing parties i'm hustling you know to figure things out and what are the ages of the kids one through seven at the time you're 22? 
22. Uh, you got, what, a five-year-old five. down to one newborn, basically? Yep, yep. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Seven children under five. Yep, sure was. That's a lot, dude. That's crazy. That is. Think of that. Wow. Just hear that. Yeah. <laughs> What seven in whole the children world? under the age of five? Oh is, my god, that's a class, bro. That is a class that, that people will be paid it well to take care of. How did I make it? I don't know, dude. Wow, I don't know. how did you? That's what I'm saying. How are you seeing? How are you seeing everybody? And is everybody in close proximity? Yeah. You're able to small drive town. everywhere, yeah, small yeah, okay. town. All right, yeah, small town, man. And to this day, me and my kids, man, we. It's, it's, it's love. We all we all lit and all this. Because I always wanted a big family in a way. You know, uh, I could have had about one woman, but that wasn't my life. And I don't regret it because the, the way it played out, that played out for me. Now, my son shouldn't do that. But uh, the environment I was in, it was just, man, being in a relationship and thinking about marriage and all that. Man, we trying to survive. In survival mode, you can't think about it. none of that. It. You cannot, I don't care. You cannot be in love in survival mode. You trying to get that's out. That's well said. Yeah, yeah, that is well that's said. That's not even, you. right now you're just faking. You coping with each other. Y'all right. each other coping, coping mechanism. I was woke. I was like, man, we can't be, if a bill come, it could throw up our whole lovely day. Yeah. If you go on a date and you happy and in love, you and the kids, but you got this, somebody gets sick and you can't afford to pay it, man, you ain't, you, you nah. So I was focused on, Getting out, getting that money. And what are your phone. parents saying? I mean, you just made them grandparents five times over by the Man, time you're 22. Nobody, nobody ain't take. Nobody ain't have to take stand up for me. I did paid, they, did I, they help you? Did they, they want to help? I, did, like, I, I wouldn't let nobody help. Okay, I paid everybody to babysit my kids. I was I was always that type of person. I don't want no favors because I ain't finna give you no favor back mm -hmm. when it's time to, when, when I'm up. So uh, at that point, I was just I was just man. I knew I was gonna be successful, so I was just like making it work. Where I was at, I got a job for two years. Um, Doing what? Uh, I worked at a power plant, and um, and and I, I tried to make it work, but the child support went up. I was like, this check ain't enough, so I got back in the streets. Mm -hmm. so now got, from twenty, go ahead. Sorry, from from from, from twenty from nineteen for twenty to twenty two, I had a job. Okay, mm -hmm. now twenty two to thirty five, which you are now, you have three more kids. Mm -hmm. How what? How far apart? Does that happen? Do you have a newborn right now? I got a one-year-old. You got a one-year-old right A six-year-old and a nine-year-old. Jesus, two kids under six is a lot. Mm-hmm. So you never felt like, man, I'm out of the woods now. I'm not going to go back and do that again. You just were like, I'm going to just keep doing what I do. And no, my ex-wife, um, two of them was with my ex-wife. So oh, I only okay. had one since right. then. My okay. ex-wife was the last two before the last one. Now, everyone you said gets along. Yeah, we which was is just, amazing. Yeah, we was just up here celebrating in my new place, my house in Bel Air. All my uh, my baby mama was up here. All the kids stay with each other. They go to, they all got rooms at my house. It's a, it's a big village. Yeah, do they and do all the kids get along oh, too? Yeah. So, man, that's that is awesome. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. That is awesome. Yeah, and yeah. you're young enough now too, honestly, to enjoy it. You're yeah. not seventy or we, eighty with all this going I'm on. Like, fun. I'm, like yeah. I'm gonna be. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> it, it, it's fun because my son, I play basketball with him. They play varsity. One of them just went out to college to play basketball. They come home. They um they make money with me online. With well, one of them, I guess, is eighteen then, right? Seventeen yeah, 18. and thirty five. Yeah. yeah, he you just got, graduated. You got a full man. He graduated already. last year. Yeah. Damn, dude. my kids older and they yeah. help. They keep me up on what's. It worked out for me. I want to now. I, they shouldn't do what I did because their environment different. So it wasn't right to do what I did, but. It's my wrong, and ain't nobody else wrong. It ain't, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, man, when people would be, that's why I make jokes about it and talk about it on stage because I'm like, bro, nobody can't, when, it took somebody in them environments and understand poverty, man, you can't, man, nah. Mm -mm. So what's your relationship with your parents? Like, who are you closest to, your mom or my, your dad? My mom passed up? when I was 11. 11? Yeah. Oh, you were young. Yeah, I was young. Oh, you didn't even have her after. Nah, oh, so I, you didn't get her long. No, nah, I had to grow up fast. What was, do you remember what that was like? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're little, but. It, it was like you alone already. You and that mama gone. I'm talking about, she was my mama. I'm talking about, I'm laying up on her. She feels warm. You know, she's cooking. So when you lose that, the rest, everything else, you'd be like, so what? you just like, I lost that at a young age. So that was the part of me that was like, um, I had to learn how to nurture myself. So, and how'd you do that? Um, I had to start being detailed like a woman. Things that my mama would do. I had to learn how to clean up 
and um and and just be nurturing, pay attention to myself like like a woman. You know, I really had to be detailed a lot because that part of me was gone. So if somebody got their mama out there, man, listen here, I don't care what you say. If you got a mama or you got a wife in your life, that's who keeping you detailed. Cause I had to learn to be detailed. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, cause and would you would you say you picked that up from the different ladies along the way? Like, no, nah, I'm more detailed than them. No, nah, yeah, no, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah, man. <laughs> I picked that up because when that part of you gone, you got somebody got to fulfill it. If nobody don't come instantly fulfill it, you start to learn. And it's like a, a, a it's like a, a turtle, a turtle with no shell. You gonna you gonna build a shell. You're going to realize what your body needs. And what I was missing was nurturing. So I'm like, my mama would have did this. So I can't sit around and watch myself not have nothing to eat. I got to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. I got to learn how to dress. I got to learn how to clean that up, clean my room, wash these dishes. You know what I'm saying? So I had to learn how to, I, every time I pee, I wipe the toilet. And I taught my sons on the one of them, listen. My mama taught me that when I was young. She said, every time you pee, a man pee, take the tissue and wipe the toilet. Because even though you can't see the moisture, it's on there. So you'll have yellow stains on your toilet. So I had to learn how to do certain things that my mom was gone and would have did for me. But you pick that up because ain't nobody was there to save me. Now, were your sisters at least helping out a little bit or were they uh, also in their own survival mode? Um, They had my grandma. Okay. But my grandma wasn't. Nobody never really, when it came to me, my mama was my best friend. She understood me because she knew Country Wayne before the world knew Country Wayne. She always said you was going to be a big star. So it's like you had to handle me a little different because I'm, don't, I'm not falling for the BS. I was a child. I could see through the – once I seen my parents take a drink, I'm like, oh, they're not my leader. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. These, so I was already woke as a child. Like, you're really on your own. Even as a child, your parents are just your provider, protector, and environment. You're never covered, because uh, when a child can't go to a, mother, a parent can't go to school with you, that child getting bullied. And he can't come home and tell parents because it's like you don't know what's really going on. So I had to man, I had to fig I had to figure life out at a young age, for sure. Now, is your dad when your mom passes, he come around a little yeah, more at he, all? He, or he, not left really? he went further away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came home one summer. I, I was supposed to be staying with him. I went to my cousin's house for the summer in Atlanta, came back. He was missing. I ain't seen my daddy for three years. Years? Yeah. And he was supposed to be, you were supposed to be living with him. Yeah. Where'd and he go? He be in town sometimes. They be like, you know your daddy was here? And I go look, man, he, man his name. And you're what, 11 or 12? Yeah, his name's Skip. So no he skipped shit. town. He skipped town like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> he, lived up, he lived up to his name. <laughs> he lived up to his name. Okay. So... Let me ask you this. What would you say you have how many, five different women you have kids with? Mm -hmm. What would you say you picked up differently from each one of these ladies that you value? Um, like what is, other than obviously they each have given you a child, of course. But mm -hmm. I mean, outside of that, as a woman in your life, what do you think you've picked up from each one of them? I picked positive up attributes. Positive yeah, attributes. Yeah, positive. <laughs> I don't want you to be I, like, that nah, chick made me start I smoking. feel like yeah. those women... All prove to me if you really got their back, unintentionals, if you love them unconditionally, like have their back and provide and protect for them without intentions of you got to give me your body, or if I do this right, then that's the only way I get rewarded. I take care of all those women. I got custody of one of my daughters, two of my daughters. And the mom's not even, I, I mean, the mom, when well, the mom not even around one of my children, and I still give the mom her child support. So it's like, but they all, it could, and, and, I learned that, man, they will pray for you without praying for you. It's not like this, getting on their knees. And, but I know they all want me to win because if they, if I win. They win. They win, and they yeah. truly know that. So it's like they you all. got to get the ego out of the way. They, that, and when a woman prayer is with you, man, like I tell people, a woman got two vaginas. <laughs> she got the regular vagina and that spiritual vagina. <laughs> we know which one you came I mean, in all the time. <laughs> I went for that spiritual vagina. I used I, when I was young, I used to go for the physical vagina, but man, you best around and catch a bacteria fish. But I, <laughs> that, that, that physical vagina is controlled by her, but that spiritual vagina is controlled by God. It's her prayer. That's what mm -hmm. real. And man, <laughs> so that's what I learned, man. The women, if you if they know you got their back, they could be with somebody else, another man. But whoever they feel like got them, that's and that's how businesses stay up. They feel like that's how the 
that's how the um the 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 welfare and food stamps stay up because it's people praying that the government keep getting they cut so they can keep sending their money back. So it's like companies, you know, a good company, man, them, they praying that this keep going. So I, a woman prayer is more powerful. So that's what I learned. For sure. And how many um, boys and girls do you have? What's the split? Oh, on two that? boys and eight girls. Yeah. What? It's it really eight girls. Yeah, man. So you brought all the ladies into the world. And you do have a feminine and energy. and these women. Oh my <laughs> god, they all got it. Uh, raising daughters, man. I have one. <laughs> She's about to be nine next uh, month. It's coming. Oh, it's already. It's here. Yeah, it's, it's already, already when here. When they get like nine, when they get five, they get the, when they get like nine, ten, and when they get a teenager, you don't know nothing. That's what everybody tells me. You ain't gonna know nothing. My daughters just think, yeah. And they and it's so bad because they'll say yes, sir, and listen, to, and they're not listening. Nothing. You gonna know which child listening? You are gonna be able to tell by the way. I have to ask her back. I'm like, what I just say? Eight eight times out of ten, she will get it. Yeah. Other times she'll be like, I didn't, I wasn't listening. I'm like, I know you weren't. They don't listen. Yep. What's the difference for you in raising boys and girls? Um, the difference with boys, um, and girls, I feel like. Mm. I feel like with the girls, they love discipline more. Boys take it too personal sometimes. A woman discipline, when your daughter, when you discipline your daughter, she don't like it, but she love it. She feel like that's my daddy love. She'll be like, she'll go tell her friend, my daddy don't play by me. Like, he just won't let me do nothing. She kind of love that because she recognized love more. Your son think you, he, 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 hey man, he think you trying to come at him and all that, but uh, that your daughter, I told my daughters, I said, I know y'all love when I discipline y'all. Cause it's like, if a woman put up a picture online and her boyfriend hit up, take that down. She gonna be in front of her friend. He just won't let me do nothing. Like he just, <laughs> he just love me so much. Good God. Like, it's like a different vibe. She feel like that's my husband don't play by me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I think the daughters appreciate discipline more. Now with your son is 18, have you guys ever had a, is he bigger than you? Yeah. Yeah, my stepson's, uh, he's 20 now. That motherfucker's 6'5". Yeah, my son's 6'3". I'm 5'10". I'm little. Yeah, he's 6'3". You ever, ever, you ever, has he ever messed with you? Act like he's going to take you? Nah, but what, what they do when we play basketball, they foul me extra hard and try to use, I'm like, where that come <laughs> from? Like, nah, my ba- <laughs> man, my elbow <laughs> to the neck, come on. And mm, I seen your little ball up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What that brother? I'm just trying to shoot a a, a jump shot. A foul. Shot. Then they got the ball in the hip. <clears throat> I'm like, all that take out. They do it in the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you this because you you said you went to the streets. You sold dope or mm-hmm. no coke? Excuse me. You mm-hmm. sold coke. Give me. Um, I ask this a lot because I know God, we've had guests that's gone to prison and, and I asked them what they do miss about. What do you miss about it? Do you feel like the hustle of that helped you with the hustle of life, with comedy, with uh, tell me? For do sure. You, do you think that taught you more than school? or? Yeah, the hustling game taught me business. I understand if you ain't got no money in it, you going to get pimped. So I, it's like. It's, and you also were smart. You never used your product. Man, I ain't never right? did That's no the drug. biggest problem most of the people. Yeah. Yeah. You never could get high off your own supply. Right. That's the number one rule. That's the number one rule. So it definitely helped me because I understood ownership through that. So I, I'm not scared to put up my own money on my businesses and projects I do. I understand that. So I came in this game as a as, as a as dope boy, as we call it in the hood. Uh, I understand the business is a little different. I understand you can't get no, you got to put some money up. In this world, if you if you go if you build a business and they put too much time and too much money in it, it's gonna get you in the end. Agreed. It needs your time, your attention, and your money. So it taught me a lot about flipping and 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 just how it taught me how to market because to be a drug dealer, you got to be a great marketer. Because how, what are you doing? What are you doing? Here's what I because I know a lot of guys do the pizza guy delivery. What what are you doing? Because it's a small town also, so mm-hmm. that means the cops probably know who everybody yeah, is yeah, as well. Exactly. So how are you getting around that? Because it was just like I sold weight. So what I would do. Oh, so I, you didn't do little bags. No, nah, I did at first. That's how I got caught. So what I started doing, I sold weight. And so if I buy half a brick, if I buy a brick, it was 36 ounces. I take that one brick, put some cut on it, 
and turn it into two and a half. Dude. <laughs> what do you cut there with? Uh, amount of talk. Who who's doing that? You? Me. You're actually doing I did it. Yourself. My own process. You but did. it was um, but I did that. It was it wasn't nothing that the mannitol was a neutralizer, a sweetener, so it didn't do nothing to you. So my drugs was actually weak. You couldn't you, my uncle said he snorted some mine and went and took a pee test the next day <laughs> it didn't. With, and a probation officer and he was fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, Your coke doesn't even mm, show mm, up on mm, the Man, I cut my drill so bad. <laughs> I had to put it in the blender. I love that. He did cook your coke anyway, knowing he was doing a drug test the next day. Yeah, he was gay. He knew he thought he was gonna go to jail. He said, and the lady said, everything's fine. He said, man, You're good. Like I he am. said, my nephew ain't nothing. They hate me. <laughs> my nephew stash ain't shit. It, it ain't nothing. Uh, I was selling weight. <laughs> I sold weight. Oh god. And it, it, it helped me to this day because that's probably why he hit my stand-up. Because in a drug drug business, you got the market without marketing. So you got, how are you doing that? Tell me how you're getting around town doing that. Word of mouth. That's it. Word of mouth. Only people who knew what I was doing were people who knew what I was doing. Okay. People so you're assume, not going to clubs or bars or eh, letting no, it be known or anything like you, that. It's a matter of time. It's just I like, agree. It's just like you say when you ask me about my stand-up. I didn't have the answer earlier, but now that's why I hit my stand-up. I'm like, if they ain't paying for it, I'm not going to keep using my stand-up to advertise you to come see because then I got to come up with new jokes. So I give you this to advertise it on funny. Skits. Mm -hmm. But I hid my stand-up. People didn't know I did stand-up to the Netflix special. For real. All the people knew was my fans. But now the world got to see because that's how I was moving in the dope game. You, everything is money. You got to monetize everything you do. So ain't nothing. So that's why I love the parallels. That's also why I love the wire. They they parallel the cops and the yeah. and the and the drug uh side and how like the lower ranks come up. But I, that's what I'm saying. That mindset of Man, you did it right. Yeah, but I could. But to kids, <laughs> I mean to say to you kids, to, kids, to, <laughs> to kids out there, do not sell drugs. <laughs> do not. It's not worth it. Not uh, these days. You will die these days. You really can't yeah, do drugs yeah, these days. Just, just don't just, do drugs. Don't do drugs. Yeah, man. don't. I promise you, because if you do drugs, you're going to get took advantage of in business. I don't care what nobody say. If you do drugs in life, you're going to get. Just be know that it's going to be somewhere in life you getting taken advantage of. Because you're not woke on every situation. So I understood that. Because my mama, my daddy, all of them did drugs. So smart men learn from his own mistakes. A wise man learn off the mistakes of others. So I just seen the game. What do you learn from, how many years did you do it? Um, 2010, 2016. Oh, six I did years. It for, you did it for a minute. Yep, six what do you years. learn the most dealing cocaine to people? What are those people like? You uh, seeing them every are they businessmen all you know what I'm saying? I'm are you uh, seeing all about, walks. What customers like? Yeah, most? what your customers, customers like, like customer service. I was a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I wear it out in front of you. So I'm not cheating you with the grounds if you buy point. If you, you give them my pleasure every time. Hey man, if you if you want 56 grounds, I might 56.5. You know what I mean? I wear it out in front of you. So they people love the feeling. Of something, so that's why. So you're letting them come right into you, see you way and over. Yeah, it's not all ready. And, and it's you broke meet off. them somewhere, and yeah, it's, it's like you know when I meet them, it's just a customer service. Yeah, hey, you want me to bring it to you? I bring it to you. You want to come get it? Come get it. And other than the one time you got caught dealing smaller amounts, you never got pinched on the bigger stuff. No, on um, when the Fed. When the, I don't even want to talk about that, but. <laughs> They, they got my daddy. They ain't get me. <laughs> we end up selling drugs together. That's they got the right guy. <laughs> man, to make a long story short, me and my dad end up selling drugs together. No. From 2010 to 2016. Can got, we talk about it? Yeah, I talked about my stand up. Was, all right, good. Because you don't have a close relationship with the man to begin with. No. So how does it come back, first of all, together just to be talking and communicating and then evolve into business together? He got out of um. When I was in 11th grade, my daddy came back around for real, for real. No, ninth grade, he came back around. But by the time I was in 11th grade, we was back close again. Okay. So we back close. 11th, 12th grade. And what was he in prison for? Uh, He sold drugs. My yeah. whole family sold drugs. So everybody, he getting out and he's just going right back to everybody, it. Everybody, anyway. my whole family. Okay. Whole family sold drugs, did drugs. That's it. And uh, he went to prison when I was in 12th grade. And oh, he went back? Yeah, he went to prison when I was in 12th grade. For how long? He did four years the first time. And how long the second time? Five, four or five. Damn. All for that? Drugs the first time. Then uh, he got out 2009, and me and him started selling drugs 2010. How did that come about? 
Whose idea? Man, it was it was really his, kind of. Because what happened was but you're already doing it by yourself. No, I'm not selling drugs. At this oh, point. At that I'm point working this job. Oh shit. I'm working this job, but man, we, we having fun every day. But one day, you know how you you know how you short on money working. You got a check coming, but you need some money to get you through the week. I said, Daddy, you got forty. I just need extra forty dollars to help me with lunch um, all week. He said, Dang, son, I was about to ask you for forty. And we looked at each other. <sighs> man, I said we gotta do something else, man. So I went to the bank. I got a bank loan. I, I used my car title, um, got got me a bank loan, five thousand dollars, and uh, I left the money with him. And then when I I went to work that week, came back, he don't went and hollered at the plug in Florida and I bought back a four and a half ounces of cocaine. Is that worth five grand? Yeah, uh, it was worth three. Okay, it was like thirty five hundred. I had spent some of the money to get me ready. Uh, okay, I had spent some of that five to get my radiator fixed. <laughs> okay, yeah, my radiator and stuff fixed on my car. Some new tires on the box Chevy. I had. I ain't want to tell y'all that. Cause I ain't know how much tire you had. It, this hun- this hundred do not meal do. So I ain't want to. <laughs> I ain't want to dry your listeners ears out. <laughs> We're good. We got time. I, I skipped. I skipped parts of the story. We got purpose. time. We don't have to edit. But yeah. So I um. All right, so you, he goes and gets this brick or he, four way, four and a half ounces. Okay, four and a half ounces, four way, and and it's just there. And then he tells you, "This is what we we should do." And he was like, "Son, yeah." And, and, and at the time, he already had some connections. I'm guessing because he was already dealing. Nah, he had a condition, in Florida man. They sold us some bad though. Oh, they did. We got rid of it though, but it was bad. And then after I made our money back, how do you know it was bad? Because you don't do it. Because when people we did, coming back and telling yeah, you, yeah, it was weak. People was like, it was weak, you know what I mean? And you could smell it. I just smell it. But my dad did it. You never did it on your gums? No, nah, my shit. dad was the test. I've never done coke my dad, I'm scared to death. My dad it. done cocaine. He used to test all the drugs. And one and one night. <laughs> he was the tester. <laughs> he tested some one night, man. He snorted about a seven grams. Because he's like, man, dang, this That's ain't nothing. That's a quarter ounce he, of yeah, cocaine. He said, they don't sold some fake drugs. <laughs> Damn. He snorted about a quarter ounce. <laughs> And he said, man, first thing in the morning, I'm going to call them, man, because the plug won't answer the I'm phone. I'm going to call them. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning. So the, he's, he's Yelp so, reviewing So the Connect, Connect won't answer the phone. So he said, in the morning, I'm calling them. I'm taking his back, son. He said, man, I'm sorry. He said, son, I'm sorry, man. They got us, man. He snorted like a seven grams. So I left the house. <laughs> about 4 o'clock in the morning, I get a call. Phone ring. It's my daddy. I, I said, what's up, possum? Hey, son. <laughs> I'm to tell you something. Ain't nothing wrong with that drugs. It just take a minute to get you. I said, what's wrong? He said, like, I'll call you when my mouth ain't gonna open. He said, it's good, son. It's good, man. He said, like, I'll call you back on mental hospital. He like to die. He said, that, it snuck up on him. It was... <laughs> It was that cocaine. <laughs> it did hit you right there. It was that cocaine, man. My dad's mouth was blue to go. I said, man, for now. <laughs> Jaw two thousand shit. All right, just snow the ground. And we'll just wait and see before we call the plug again. It's always do it and wait an hour. It's the, always yeah, do it and wait whatever an hour. you think you should do, you man, do half he's of supposed that to and die. you wait an hour. He was supposed to die. Man, I went to him, his eye, I was seeing him that his eyes were swole. <laughs> <laughs> this man looked like he had ate some allergic seafood. <laughs> this brother was, I said, Daddy, man, you supposed to die. He said, I know, son. He said his heart would beat so fast one time. He was scared to get up. He said he knew if he would <laughs> if he would have got up, he would have died. He said his heart was. I feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn, dude. I, I remember him saying he felt like he had two hearts. He said they were like. <laughs> he said it would be like. <laughs> 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 Yeah, man. So, yeah, he was a tester, man. <sighs> All right, here's a question I have for you. Uh, anybody ever surprise you? You ever get a pastor or a teacher or uh, someone you, you know what I mean? Somebody maybe you knew for an elementary school teacher as a customer, I mean. Heck, yeah. Yeah, people surprise me. Like, like who, who would come up and you'd be like, no way. This guy wants coke. Man, or this lady wants coke. It's this lady who I really... Respect it, man. And I don't lose respect, but she, he wasn't even coke. She had to deal with somebody I know. She was on crack. And I'm like, God, dog, she holding up so well. 
Oh, really? Yeah, and you couldn't see it on us. So now when everybody asks me for money in my family, and they be needing money too much, I be like, are you on crack? I always ask that because of her, because she did, you couldn't see it on her. So I always learned that, um, man, just because you don't see it on people. If you got money, that's why a lot of people who, in the like in the industry or uh, entertainers, music or whatever, they can't, you'll never be able to tell because money can cover it up for a minute. If you if you could put some Gucci on some crackhead shoulders, hey, you can't tell. It just, yeah. just looked like they just vibing, you know, but yo. So it was her. And then after that, I was just like, this is what it is. This is streets. So you and your dad do this for six years. Yeah. And why do you end up stopping? I went viral. So went while by- you were so you were doing all this country weighing your sketches and stuff while you're dealing I, coke with your dad? I'm two million followers strong, still selling drugs. No. Popular. For real. Country Wayne. You got a you got a family business going on with your dad. I can't <laughs> I can't let it go right now because you know I'm famous, but I ain't getting no show money yet. So at two million followers, you're still selling drugs mm-hmm. with your dad. Yeah. And then what happens? What 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 puts you to the point where you're like, all right, I'm I can't I'm done. I don't need to ever again. Okay. Well, first of all, he got And it. how does your business partner feel about you leaving the Oh business? my God. <laughs> my daddy was trying to hold me in the streets, bro. He did not want me to leave because he felt like no, he, didn't. he didn't want me to leave. Yeah, he, man, he was like, cash cow. he didn't want me to leave. And um, he pretended like he wanted me to go, but you you, you just see the signs. Like, we try, we trying to get out, but you buying a car. Like, you know, so, but he messed around and uh got caught one night. Oh, he did. And the police beat him, but he, uh, he had an altercation with the police and they had to take him to the hospital and they forgot to arrest him. So when he got to the hospital, uh, what do you mean they forgot? Because he they just they, fucked him up. And no, they, they they ain't do the. Oh, they didn't cuff him. No, they cuffed him and everything, but they ain't do the um the process, whatever they call. It. I forgot the name of it. But I'll um, oh, read him his Miranda rights and fingerprint him. And yeah, all fingerprint that stuff. him and all Book that. Him or whatever. They had him at the table, but then he was about to faint, and they was like, "What well, is wrong?" He said, uh, "So they like they take him to the hospital." So they they never finished that got part. It. So when he got to the hospital, so that's a technicality. The technicality, they, right? Yeah. But when he got to the hospital. The police was going to sit there with him, but the doctor said, you can't sit here because he's not arrested. So they said, we'll come back and get him in the morning. So, man, I called him and checked on him. I said, it's all right, Pops. I'm going to be all right out here, man. I'm going to do this I'm gonna, um, do this music thing. I'm gonna, Man, something my spirit told me to call him back. I said, so when the police at? They still outside? They said, no, they're going to come back and pick me up in the morning because they say, uh, the doctor said I wasn't arrested. Man, do you know? I told my daddy, leave that hospital right now. This is 2014. I say, leave that hospital. He say, what? I say, man, get out of there, you and your girlfriend. And he he make, basically ran from the po- hospital, and they was looking for him for two years. So Two reason, years? Yep. And the reason why we quit, because when I finally went viral and started doing shows, I quit. And the next day after I quit, the feds came looking for him. So it was like they was on us the whole time, you know, kind of. But, yeah, that was it was a crazy situation. A lot of crazy things happened. But that's how we end up ending. Um, I quit. Feds came to get him because he was keeping going because they was looking for him for two years anyway. And then after that, man, I was country way into the world. Funny guy. So how many followers and like what level of fame do you hit where you finally walk away from dealing? I was getting show money. People started wanting to book me for 5000 here, 4000 okay. here. So I was like. And you were like, I'm done with this uh, shit. I'm making, I'm making 20, 20, 30 grand a month without drugs. That's yeah. it. I'm gone. Yeah. yeah, without drugs. That's right. Yeah. Without hustling. Mm-hmm. So going back to growing up earlier before we uh one of your friends out there said you were a bad kid. Like what tell me about you growing up as a kid, little little con- little country Wayne. Everything funny. I'm a I'm a pity. Like I just like to laugh. So that's what he mean by that. Like You like play practical jokes on people. No, nah, I don't shit. play like that. Oh um, it's just like it, it could be a real serious moment. I'm still gonna laugh. Like I'm, I'm a laugher. I like the joy. Like it ain't nothing that serious. Inappropriate to me. times and shit is the best. The best church. Yeah, you ain't supposed to laugh. Mm-hmm. And then you sure. see somebody laughing next to you, just shaking, and you trying to hold it. I'm in. trying like, to hold it, man. <gasps> when people go to crying about certain stuff, I'm like, come on, man, don't, don't make that face. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, <laughs> you know I can't help it. I like to laugh. That's what it mean by that. I laugh at a lot of stuff. So talk to me about having. 10 kids, man, because you got 
basically, you said one. I mean, that's a newborn, basically. Yeah. All the way up to a grown man. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Man, you know, um, because I know every baby's different. Every this one might like to be swaddled. This one might like to be held. This one might. How do you? And you've got eight ladies. Yep. You kind of you can just do what they like, whatever they want, whatever you feel like they need at the moment. You try your best to just do it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do, for sure. Do you like being a dad? Oh yeah, I love it, man. It's the it's the it's the most fulfilling thing I got right. going on. I agree. Like. That's nice to hear you say too, because you have a lot going on in your life. You just you just dropped a, a Netflix special at number one. Mm. You got everything going on online. You got a tour going, all that shit. And here you are sitting here saying that the the best thing you do as a dad. I love it. That's it, man. My my most exciting thing this year. And thank God I got number one on Netflix. I'm ready for my son, Varsity Games. Yeah, I, I take off. I take off. Um. I told my agency, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking off November through February. I'm not going back on tour to March because for his basketball, he, he's excited. It's his first year being able to uh, play varsity because he couldn't play because he transferred from a private school last year. So it was a little mess up. But he's on the varsity team and he, he's good. And me and my family love to go see that. So it's like the Netflix special going number one, I was grateful. The most thing I was grateful for was my kids seeing that because I'm so, my brand is positive. Mm -hmm. But they listen to a lot of negative stuff, negative music. Because you, as a parent, you got to compete with the world. So I'm like, I'm showing them that you could be positive and cool. Because my brand is Jesus is popping. And everybody know that Wayne's positive. I don't curse him a comedy or whatever. So it's about them kids. It's like when you get, and life is really, even when you get rich, it's like the way taxes set up, you got to give it away. Anyway, so, you know, it's just like, that's what it's about. That's why I watch the Deion Sanders. I'm like, people don't know. I know that joy he's feeling. There's no amount of money a person can pay to feel that he's out there coaching his son. Dude, I love it. I got my Colorado hoodie when I was in the hospital in January. Yeah, I was ready to like, go. I'm so excited for what they're going to do up there. How old is your daughter? She'll be nine next month. Yeah, man. When you see it, you know, you know how, you know, you, you, I'm pretty sure you don't have no moments where you're looking at this what really matters. Dude, I do it every weekend. I go to her soccer game. So you know what I'm saying. And I when, stand behind a goal and I see her in the net and I just look and I'm like, I don't give a when she, fuck when, about anything When she stopped that ball, or that feeling. Runs out there, not scared, and dives on it. And yeah, that feeling. Like, and like, when she's yeah. excited, mm -hmm. when, when you see her really excited about her work. So that thing there, man. You know what kids. else I love, too, is like I, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll know I'm going to one of her events, but I don't tell her. Mm -hmm. And then when I show up. That excitement you see in a kid, it's like, man, so somebody's here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being repped right now. I'm being loved. And, man, just to see it. And then she's got this energy, and I see her start acting differently mm -hmm. with her friends. I fucking love being able to do that. That's real, man. Yeah. That's real. And um, and I think me not having my mom at that age, I think I needed that. To be honest, now looking back, me having all them kids, I'm like, man, I need it. My kids are, they, because you can't, man, you can't replace that joy. No, nope. and you don't gone. get it. You know, it's already gone with your other son. He's he's a man now. Yeah, different joys, different things yeah. will come. You'll be a grandfather, hopefully not too oh, soon. Oh no, I'm gonna be a deadbeat granddaddy. <laughs> you should be, dude. Oh you my god, have put I'm your a time good daddy, in. but I promise you, I'm gonna be the worst granddaddy <laughs> in history. I'm not keeping no kid. I don't get not a night. Nope. Not a going night. to the story, going out, taking with you. I will call the people and tell them that you left a child. <laughs> I hear abandoned. I'm gonna be a dead. I tell my kids, boy, don't don't don't, don't do it because I'm not keeping them kids, man. You could be a, a legit grandfather under forty. Yeah, easy. But, but that, it, it, well, shit, your pro, your dad was he? It, How old was your dad when you made him a grandfather? He was forty. Forty. Yeah, yeah. It's a young grandfather. But they better. Um, so let me ask you this: the the two daughters you have uh, complete custody of. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're still good with their mom and everything. Oh, yeah. So what is it? Do, it's so different. You got How do you make time for all these kids? How do you Man. make time to see them, talk to them? Do you FaceTime a lot? Because think yeah. about coming up, there wasn't that opportunity either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just, if somebody didn't have a phone on the wall and you weren't there at the same time, you weren't talking mm -hmm. to them. So how, how are you? Are you able to FaceTime yeah, and face like, keep in touch? FaceTime and they... Um, Eight of my kids stay right around me in my house in Atlanta. My son stay with me 24-7. And um, the rest of them, their moms stay right around the corner. 
So they all come there. Everybody's close. Everybody's close. Hell yeah. I and, love it. And then when they spend the time with each other, they feel like they spend the time with me. Because the other baby mamas might take them, go out of town with them. And, you know, they, oh, were, they will. They was all just up here. Like, um, I mean, my kids was here. One, two, four of my kids was up here with, um, we had a Netflix celebration yesterday. Um, they was up here. They're going to go back. The other, my, my other baby mama, mama's keeping them while the other baby mama go on her vacation trip. So I finna have eight of my, eight of my kids to my house. They all got rooms. So it's just like, it's a family, man. We all a family. All my whole family. Uh, that's why my success, man. I take care of my whole family for real. Like everybody get a chick every month. How's that feel for you? It feels good, man. It does, does. It feels good because. I like that you're not just hoarding it and being like, fuck all y'all. This is my shit. I did this. You got to give away that money because uh, 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 they say you grow money buying things, but God say, if you help people, I got you. It comes back. I tell everybody all the time. Young 20-something, I would have told 50-year-old me, fuck you. That's $20,000 a a lot of money these motherfuckers took from me, and that's family. I want that fucking money. And for years, I would think about that. And then later in life, I realized, this. don't worry. This shit's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming man. back. It's going to come when you really need it. Yeah, you no. didn't need it that moment. Exactly. You would have fucking fucked it off, too, on some stupid ass Mustang or some dumb yeah. bullshit. You know, something you really don't even have. So I feel you on that. It does feel good to provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get I, I get a joy out of that, too. But like, I'll pay for that. I got that. Like, I sent my daughter and her mother, I don't know, it was a couple months ago, I was on the road, and I was like, why don't you all do a uh, mom-daughter night? And I told my daughter, like, go see Little Mermaid again, and I paid for them to go watch, you mm-hmm. know? Like, get the popcorn, do whatever, go hang out with mom. Yeah. I don't know, it feels good. It feels good. It man. ain't a fucking mansion in Bel Air with everybody, but nah, I'll tell nah, you what, nah. it's popcorn. Nah, 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 you know it's good. Hey, man, it's get whatever. the medium size. You yeah. Know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what it is, man. Yeah. All right. So look, I told you uh, outside and we talked. This is your first time here. Um, I want to hear it because this is a very, it's a just so for me, uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. My mom left our family early on and my dad died when I was 16. So from then on, I have no parents and I mm-hmm. feel you like. I mean, shit, I learned how to tie a tie on YouTube. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I wish I had YouTube when I was 16 in 1980, fucking nine, figuring this shit out on myself. So your story of coming up that way, figuring it out yourself really resonates. Um, you're a dad at 17, and I ask everyone their first time here advice that you would give to your 16-year-old self. So I'm curious, after just what we've talked about today, looking back, what advice would you give 16-year-old country Wayne? Lead with love every time, not with lust. <laughs> that's a great. <laughs> that's great advice for sixteen-year-old you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like that instead of like yeah. pull out, you know. You yeah, should. it's like <laughs> make sure there's a, it, that connection is. It might be bigger than lust. Don't don't eliminate lust and see what they and see what that moment really is. Yeah, because lust can turn into a whole person. Yeah, lust turns into a whole person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a with, whole person. With hands that do this. <laughs> yeah, and a mouth that needs to eat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. Dude, Country Wayne, thank you very much for coming on. It's been I, it's one of the hardest uh, times I've laughed in a minute. I needed one of these. Sometimes these get heavy as shit, and mm-hmm. I, I appreciate you bringing uh, uh, lightness to this. So, again, please plug everything. You're special. You're all of it. Yeah, man, Country Wayne, uh, Netflix special out, A Woman's Prayer. Just type in Country Wayne with a K and just follow the journey, man. And uh, Peace and love to everybody. All love. That's awesome. Thank you. As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Come see me on tour. Tickets are on my website. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.